Hello everyone, this is me Dr. Promi. At first, I welcome you all in CEE discussion series. So today I am here to discuss about the questions related to mandatory CPD, which were not asked before and it has been asked since 2077. So uh, in this uh, mandatory CPD, questions related to medical ethics, rational use of drugs, infection prevention, BLS, ACLS, and communication skills are asked. And the most important thing is it carries 10 marks, right? In CEE examination, 10 marks is really important and will be really beneficial to you all to score the good marks. So without wasting time, let's move to the first question. In a governmental program of 2016 in rural district, weekly iron tablet were given to the adolescent girls on a biannual basis for three months, right? So according to this program, what is the number of tablets supplemented in a year? Here, the options are 13, 26, 52, and 104. We should know about the governmental program of 2016 here. Under this component, all the adolescent girls aged between 10, to 19 years are supplemented with weekly iron folic acid tablet on a biannual basis in Straun and in MAG. In Straun for three months, that is Straun, Bhado, and Asus, and in MAG for three months, MAG, Pagun, and Chaitra round. So in each round, they are provided iron folic acid tablet, one tablet every week for 13. Right? So each adolescent girls get 26 iron folic acid tablet in a year. So the right answer is 26. So let's move to the next question. If a registered medical practitioner is accused of medical negligence, compensation needs to be paid to the suffering party is determined by we have options like Chief District Officer, Nepal Medical Council. Consumer Welfare Protection Forum and Nepal Medical Association. So, if medical practitioner is accused of medical negligence, compensation needs to be paid to the suffering party is always determined by Nepal Medical Council. So, here the right answer is Nepal Medical Council. So, third question is, while breaking bad news, the patient suddenly starts crying. What will be your appropriate response in such a case? The options are give empathy to the patient, convince him or her not to cry, ignore and move to the next patient, call attendant and ask to give empathy. Here, uh, in practical life, we usually do um, ignore and move to the next patient, right? Most of us uh, uh, do ignore and move to the next patient, but it should not be done. So this is excluded. We should not call our attendant and ask uh, to give empathy. This is not necessary at all, right? So this is also excluded. We should not convince him or her not to cry, right? So this is also um, excluded. The right answer is give empathy to the patient. Patient obviously cries um, after bad news, right? So we should not, I think it is not appropriate to convince him or her not to cry. So we should always uh, give empathy to the patient. So the right answer is A. Fourth question is, a mother brings her child to the OPD chamber. What will be the most appropriate step taken to restrain the child? The options are, ask mother to hold the child on lap and talk to mother. Ask mother to keep the child on table and proceed examination. Give toys to child and talk to mother. Ask mother to keep child on chair and talk to child. Here, while attending a child in OPD chamber, child usually starts crying, right? So to restrain the child at that situation, we should uh, give toys to the child. It is better to give 
toys to the child and talk to the mother about the presenting complaints and problems uh, related to the child. So here the right answer is give toys to child and talk to the mother. Fifth question is while examining the breast of the rape victim, what is the appropriate step? Most appropriate step taken during an examination. Take photographic images which is sufficient for proof. Examine both breasts at once to complete examination on time. Don't touch and press the nipple. Or examine both breasts one by one in clockwise direction. Here, uh, C option is already excluded because uh, obviously we should touch uh, the breast, right? Uh, examine both breasts at once and complete the examination on time. It is not right, so it is also excluded. Taking photographic images uh, is somehow right, but uh, it is not the most appropriate step. So this is also excluded. So the right answer is examine both breasts one by one in clockwise direction. Right? I hope you guys are understanding well. So uh, let's move to the sixth question. Although mass prophylaxis for filariasis is given to endemic places, it is still not in control in those districts because the options are mass chemoprophylaxis in, is ineffective in filariasis, filaria is seen in non endemic area, data collection is not adequate, people immigrate from another endemic area. Here I directly uh, go to the right answer. The right answer here is people immigrate from another endemic area. Due to this reason, although mass prophylaxis for filariasis is given to the endemic places, it is still not in control in those districts, right? So this is the right answer here. The seventh question is, what is the most appropriate program conducted for infection control in regional level? In regional level, right? So the options are make protocol to, to control nosocomial infection in each hospital, make a regional level program to control infection, conducting national level surveillance and make program to control infection, and minimize the risk related to climate change and disaster. Here, conducting national level surveillance and make program to control infection is already excluded because national level program is not done by the regional level, right? Making protocol to control nosocomial infection in, in each hospital is not possible. So, the here right answer is B. Make a regional level program to control the infection. We should make the program and conduct the program in regional level for uh, infection control, right? So, the eighth uh, question is, which one of the following is not considered as professional misconduct according to the Nepal Medical Council? Here, we should be alert uh, in question that not. Right? The word uh, not is really important here. So, sale sample drugs, attend conferences sponsored by pharmaceuticals, do private practice, and adulterism. Here, doing private practice is not considered as professional misconduct according to the Nepal Medical Council Act. The right answer is doing private practice. So, selling sample drug, attending conferences is sponsored by pharmaceuticals and adulterism is of course, obviously the um, professional misconduct. As I have already told you that doing private practice is not considered as professional misconduct. Here, uh, according to the Medical Council Act on professional actions and misconducts are as follows. 
here we have four points which are considered as unprofessional actions and misconduct according to the Medical Council Act. First point is a physician should use an 8, 18 into 14 inch size signboard and write his name, NMC number, qualification, titles, and name of his speciality. The letters should be in blue on white blackboard. He or C should not use the international red cross symbol to make known the fact of being physician. It is improper to affix a sign vote on a chemist shop. Second point is a physician should not encourage any direct or indirect advertisement in the media with or without photograph of congratulatory nature that is linked with professional services being offered. Third point is a physician should not use any talk or agent for procuring patient. The fourth and last point is a physician should not insult or misbehave with fellow physicians by words or any behavior. Right? So, let's move to the ninth question. All of the following statements about alcohol-based sanitizer are true except 70% except alcohol is used. It, is, uh, it can be substitute of hand washing in soiled hand. Hand sanitizer is flammable and should be stored away from heat or flame. 4% chlorhexidine can be used. We all know that in alcohol based sanitizer, 70% alcohol is used, and sanitizer is flammable and should be stored away from heat and flame. And 4% chlorhexidine can also be used, right? So, here, Alcohol based sanitizer cannot be a substitute of hand washing in soil hand. So, the right answer here is B. We should first uh, wash our hands with uh, soap and water, then only we should use the hand washing. But it cannot be a substitute of hand washing in a soil hand. So, finally, the 10th. And the final question of CBT. What is the first step you do when the patient visits your OPD chamber? The options are lock the door as soon as the patient enters the chamber, ask presenting complaints as soon as the patient enters your room, greet and introduce yourself, and proceed to examination. Here, uh, locking or unlocking the door as soon as the patient enters to the chamber is not that necessary, right? This is excluded. Proceed to examination. We should never proceed to examination directly without the preliminary examination or preliminary phase. So, ask presenting complaints as soon as the patient enters your room is uh, not necessary. Right. So, here the right answer is greet and introduce yourself first. Greet and introduce yourself first uh, is the first step we do when the patient visits our OPD chamber. The first step to do when patient enters to OPD chamber is always and always to greet them and introduce yourself with a tender smile. Then only asking for chief complaints and examination is done, right? So it will help you a lot to make diagnosis if we are able to make him or her comfortable. So the rapport should be well maintained. So this ends our 10 CPD questions which were asked in 2077. I hope uh, this session was beneficial to you all. I wish you all the best for upcoming CE examination. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much.